Hello students. Today we will try to learn about the self fractionation. Self fractionation can be defined as the process of separation of similar and homogeneous sets of organelles from a heterogeneous population of cells. The cell is composed of smaller physical units, the organelles. To increase our chemical knowledge of organelles function is by isolating organelles into rationally pure fractions. Each organelle has its own characteristics like size, shape, density, which make it different from other organelles within the same cell. If the cell is lysed in a proper manner, each of its organelles can be subsequently isolated. The progress of opening cells is homogenization and the subsequent isolation of organelle is fractionation. Isolation of organelles require the use of physical and chemical techniques which should range from the use of simple sieves gravity sedimentation to ultra centrifugation. There are three prime steps involved in the process of cell fractionation. The steps are cell disruption. Cell disruption refers to the process of liberating the biological and organic molecules which are within a cell. The tissue is homogenized in a solution in which the water content is maintained equal to the water content within the cell. Thus, no osmotic damage takes place in a cell. Other methods like mincing, chopping, osmotic shock are used to liberate the cell organelle from the cell. Sometimes the tissue is kept in ice cold water or a buffered solution to prevent damage and to prevent any change in the chemical composition of a cell. Let's try to understand homogenization. The first step in the preparation of isolation of organelle is to obtain a pure sample. Cells which are not attached to others can be separated if they have distinct shape, densities or characteristics which can be marked such as charge, antigen or enzyme presence. Cells which are a part of a tissue first needs to be separated out from all connections with other cells. It can be done by using chelating agent or by enzymatic or non-enzymatic mechanical disaggregation. This result in a in a changes such as cell-cell communication as desmosomes and tight junctions. Different homogenization techniques can be, can be osmotic alteration of the media in which cells are found or those which require physical force to disrupt cell membrane like use of mortal and pestles, blenders or ultrasonication. Osmotic shift. Osmotic shift can lead to many organelle separation easier. The use of hypoosmotic buffer will cause osmotic swelling of the cell, which can often assist in pure rupture of the cell and subsequent organelle separation. Mortars and pestles. The most common procedure use mortar and pestle arrangement with controlled bore size. The addition of a mortar driven Teflon pestle creates homogenizers. Ultrasonication is also used adjacent to this procedure, but it is often sufficient by itself. With all forms of homogenization, the shear force must be carefully controlled. If it is too little, then organelle will not be separated, and if it is too much, then the molecules can be broken. To get pure organelles, the cell must be ruptured so that the cell membrane is broken, but not the organelle. The process of rupturing a cell is known as homogenization of the cell. It also varies from simple mortar pestle grinding for many plant materials to repeated high velocity compression and expansion in what is known as a French press. It is preferred when molecular dissociation is required. Blenders Varieties of blenders from household blender to high speed blenders with specially designed blades and chambers are used for molecular separation. Blenders vary in sophistication are available. The mechanical procedure are amplified by various organic solvents and detergents to assist the denaturation and separation of molecule. Ultrasonication. 
Ultrasonicators have been used to separate organelles from cells, particularly from the tissue culture. Light use of an ultrasonic wave can readily remove cells from a tissue culture substrate. It can also be adjusted to merely separate cells or to break cells, open the plasma membrane and leave the internal organelle intact. Now let's try to understand about the filtration. Filtration is commonly the mechanical or physical operations which is used for the separation of solids from fluids by interrupting a medium through which only the fluid can pass. Oversized solids in the fluid are retained but the separation is not complete. Solids will be contaminated with some fluids and filtrate will contain fine particles. The step is not mandatory in some cases. But during the fractionation of animal tissue, filtration through gauze or a suction filter is necessary in order to leave out the fluid connective tissue as a residue. There are mainly three types of the filters, which are mechanical, chemical or multi-stage filtration. Mechanical filtration. In mechanical filtration, particles are captured and written by means of physical barriers. Our vacuum cleaners accomplish this by a series of cloth polyethylene or paper filters. Four factors affect mechanical filtration of a substrate. The particle size of the substance being collected, the air velocity or speed at which the substance is traveling, the filter media capturing the substance and finally the running time or amount of time the filter has been used. Chemical filtration. Chemical filtration changes the physical characteristics of gas or vapor for example mercury vacuum work on this type of filtration principle, adsorbing toxic mercury vapors and exhausting clean air into the environment. Multi-stage filtration. A multi-stage is a series of progressively finer filter capture increasingly smaller particles as the working air travel through the vacuum cleaner. Next aspect is purification and segregation. The filtrate obtained in the previous step is sedimented or rotated at a very high speed thereby increasing the gravitational force. The different organelles are separated according to their density within the test tube. This process is called centrifugation. Gravity sedimenters. Once the cells have been homogenized, the various components must be separated. In some cases, this can be accomplished by the simple use of gravity sedimentation. In this procedure, the samples are allowed to sit and separate. Separation occurs due to the natural difference in size and shape of the cells. Centrifugation. Centrifugation is the first step in most fractionation, but it separates only components that differ greatly in size. A repeated centrifugation at progressively higher speed will fractionate homogenate of cells into their components. In general, the smaller the subcellular component, the greater is the centrifugal force required. The most widely used technique for fractionating cellular component is the use of centrifugation. Procedures employing low speed instrument with greater volume capacity and refrigeration are known as preparative techniques. A centrifuge working at speed in excess of 20,000 rpm is an ultra centrifuge needs in analytical protocols. Organelles can be separated in the centrifuge according to a number of basic procedures. Particles in suspension can be separated by either sedimentation velocity or by sedimentation equilibrium. Sedimentation velocity is also known as zone centrifugation and has the advantage of low speed centrifugation and short time but yield incomplete separation. Sedimentation equilibrium is also known as isopicnic or density equilibration and requires specimen to be subjected to a high speed for prolonged period of time. It has the advantage of separating particles completely. Thank you very much. And these are the references.